In your recent self-interview in New York Magazine, you discussed Marilyn Monroe's inner negotiations with evil. Many of your characters over the years have carried on the same sort of negotiations. Marion Fay, DJ, Rojack, there's many. I take it that you would not agree with Hannah Arendt on the essential banality of evil. No, I, I wouldn't agree with uh, Hannah Arendt at all. Not at all. I uh, always felt that, uh, in fact, I always felt that, found that philosophy unpleasant. You, you know, she can make a case. Uh, there are any number of people who are prodigiously evil who have terribly ordinary and, from the novelist's point of view, dis disappointing exteriors. But to assume that uh, because Eichmann was a, superficially speaking, a little man, and an ordinary man in appearance, and vulgar, and dull, that therefore evil itself was banal, uh, strikes me as a uh, uh, as the exhibition of a prodigious poverty of imagination. Liberals uh, don't truly want to believe in, in the vast power and properties of this unconscious. And in this unconscious, evil of, 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 of a power and an extent and a hideousness and a, a murderousness that we can't begin to contemplate resides in the most ordinary people. Now, to mistake the surface for the reality is to perform the fundamental liberal error. Liberalism simply has not been able to provide answers to confusing and complex questions, and hasn't begun to be able to deal with the haunting question of the 20th century, which is not communism, but fascism, Nazism. It can't come near to this incredible phenomenon, which took over a country of the most decent, hard-working, clean people in the world. No, you had everybody working hard, and yet you had this incredible phenomenon of a fascism that went far beyond the bounds of totalitarianism into the most extraordinary uh, and despicable adventures with, with the liquidation and extermination of, of uh, vast numbers of people, not only the Jews, but, but the Poles, the Gypsies, the, uh, we can go through the list. You know, there were as many million other people killed as there were Jews killed. There was an extraordinary uh, uh, extermination of humanity. And this coming out of, out of a people who had always been um, uh, so tremendously uh, um, law-abiding suggested that the unconscious was truly a hideous place and one could not, one did well not to start to speak of the banality of evil. I think, I think to speak of the banality of evil is precisely to point us further in the wrong direction. Bob Lucid, your friend, literary critic, once wrote that the magic of your writing was based on an implicit promise to connect the world of Freud with the world of Marx, the public world of politics with the private world of dreams and hallucinations. You once called this a radical bridge. Are you still as committed to working on this bridge as you were in 1957? Intellectually speaking, I grew up under the shadow of Marx and Freud. They were both men who created an entire world system. They had a vision of all of existence, and that impressed me immensely. And I was nothing if not intellectually ambitious when I was young, and I wanted to come up with a similar vision that would comprehend everything. Uh, by now, I've come to realize that it's enormously difficult, and I don't have, uh, I simply don't have uh, the, 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 uh, the intellectual discipline and the mental grandeur to begin to do anything remotely like what they did. But uh, I still, you know, one tries to do the best one can with what one's got. So uh, I'm still trying to connect up as much as I can, because I think it's terribly important. I think until we understand the ways in which the uh, uh, authority manipulates us, until we understand the ways in which our lives are, are obliged to be led in ways we don't particularly enjoy, until we understand though, all those reasons why so many of us feel dead inside so much of the time, uh, and come to recognize how much of that is not the cause of our own lack of imagination, but our lack of imagination is the product of vast institutional systems of greed and injustice that come forward toward us as rather benign manifestations. The only way we can tell that something terrible is going on is that we all feel a little duller than we ought to feel. 
and we wonder what's wrong. Why, why do I feel so dull inside? Very often, that's the end of a long chain, a long, uh, you might say, socially uh, intentional process that keeps us uh, malleable and amenable and, and uh, short on such powerful emotions as outrage and injustice. In that sense, I'm still trying to find the roots, trace it out, bring in the, the ultimate indictment against all that's awful and evil in society. That is still a radical bridge, isn't it? Yes, it's just that I don't have, I don't have those two marvelous mountains, Marx and Freud, any longer. And I'm somewhere tracking around in the foothills and kicking up a lot of dust.